so many people ask me, you're going to sell one cake, just one cake? Because I only sell one cake, by the way, on the yeah. lower right. Yeah, you know that. So I only literally have one product. I do it in three sizes, one product. It was a gamble. I decided that I wanted to do it um, proper in a way. So I went ahead to rent a kitchen. I had my own space, my own commercial space. And all this was just money put in in good faith, knowing that, uh, hoping, rather partly hoping, partly calculated risk that it would take off because I, I noticed that there were so many people with the request. Yeah. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Chill Mom Boss Show and I'm your host, Michelle Hahn. And today with me, I have Jane. Jane is the founder of Roa Midnight, an artisanal patisserie. It is the home to the iconic midnight cake. If you have not tried this cake, you have to because it has totally changed my perception of what a vegan cake should <laughs> taste like. It's delicious. It's, um, it's interestingly using, um, uses avocado instead of butter. And uh, Jane previously used to work in the banking sector, but she's now a trained pastry chef who started her home baking business from home. And, as, um, and also because I, I suppose we'll just jump right in. Welcome Jane and let her tell her story. Hi Jane. Hi Michelle, it's lovely to meet you again. <laughs> Always lovely to see you too. Um, yeah, so would you mind telling our audience how you started the business and why? What, like, first of all, you know, um, what was the transition like? What made you want to start this um, business? And how is, is it like? Is it, um, is it because you want to stay at home for your girls or is it the other way around? So yeah, tell us. So it's very interesting. Like you mentioned, I used to be in banking. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole transition was I had a, pa a passion in pastry. I had a passion in doing desserts. So that's when I decided to make the career switch. And when I did a career switch, it was a very drastic one. Uh, it wasn't about just, you know, um, taking a course. I literally left the country. I went to Australia and I did a patisserie, a, a patisserie course at the Le Cordon Bleu. So it was a really major shift. Um, having said that, I expected myself to, you know, carry on this in like working full on, full time in the hotels and, and all the fine dining restaurants and all that. But as you know, life would have it. I went there with my husband and I was very blessed to have a baby girl. <laughs> so that made me rethink my priorities. And I we came home uh, to Singapore and I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, so, you know, having that, that fire in me, that wanting to, to, to do this as a career, I couldn't, I couldn't just be a stay-at-home mom and not do anything. So I decided that, why don't I try doing home baking? You know, at that point, there were some home bakers. It was like a good seven, eight years ago. There were home bakers around, but I decided that, you know, I wanted to do something that wasn't um, widely available. And that's when I started my home, uh, home baking um, fondant cake business. That was my very, very first venture. Ah, all right. So you started with fondant cake. Um, how was it different then compared um, to the other home baker back then? So I think it was more the style, the trend. So a lot of the cakes that were available were very, very cute, very loud in colors, you know, very vibrant colors. Whereas I brought a very pastel uh, shade tone and, and I wanted something very muted, very, very um, minimal in that sense. Right. right. It, was a, it was a bit of a change. Um, and also I think I did a lot more Maybe I have girls or something. I did a lot more female cakes. <laughs> Maybe girl cakes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's still very much, um, sort of like the colours of Royal Midnight now, right? It's very minimalist. It's very muted. It's not, it's not bright and loud. And, oh, yeah. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> very elegant. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> so then how did you transition into um, making vegan cake or... Right. So there was a little bit of a transition in between. Um, I started doing, the. it's called Pretty Delicious. That was my old business, ah. the fondant cake business. And then I shifted into what uh, I, the next business was Naked Cakes. So I heard about, or rather I sensed, and I felt the frustration of not being able to, to, to do more. I wanted to scale and I wasn't able to because I had to do everything from scratch. And that's when I started Naked Cakes. So that was my second business. So after, when I started Naked Cakes, I literally supplied my cakes, the bases, to home bakers. They would buy it and decorate it and then sell it. So yeah. it 
in their time, it was efficient, it helped, you know, it helped them scale a little bit more. Yeah. Home base. Yeah. And then when I listened to a lot of um, queries from parents, many people who asked me for cakes were always, those who were left out really spoke to me. Um, they couldn't eat because their kids were allergic or the party someone was allergic, you know, and that really bugged me a lot. But having said that, I was like, oh, you know what, there's the minority, I'm not going to bother about that, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't, it didn't really hit me until my own goddaughter had severe allergies. So she has major three allergies, eggs, gluten, and dairy. <laughs> so can you imagine not having these three things in one single yeah. thing? It's, yeah. it's really challenging. I can tell you that even from a pastry chef's point of view, yeah, the, the challenge in making that, that scientific concoction, it's not easy. So that's when I decided that, you know what, as a godma, I needed to do something for her. And that really what, was what drove me to create this recipe. Mm, yeah. yeah. So okay. usually sometimes it's not, um, I think I, a lot of business, especially when it's um, female founded business, a lot of our business is really founded because of a struggle that we have or a struggle that, you know, someone close to us have and, and look where it took you. So from Naked Cake, I mean, you already have your clientele back then that was like relying on your, you know, cake bases for them to, to decorate on and build on and sell. And you decided to okay, I'm not serving you anymore. I'm going into this. So like, how was that transition? Like, it would be hard to say no to income and go into something so like entirely unknown. You are right. You are very, very right on that. Actually, you're spot on. When I, um, what I did was that I didn't want to disappoint my clients. I have very um, loyal core following, you know, home bakers who actually um, de depended on my services. So what I did was I, I actually sold the business. Right, so I sold that business to somebody who was as passionate about supplying, as passionate about you know supporting home bakers. So I was very glad that was taken care of. Um, but the transition, like you mentioned, was very scary because this new company I I, I met with so much, um, so many people asked me, "You're gonna sell one cake, just one cake?" Because I only sell one cake, by the way. On, on your, right? so, yeah, you know that. So I only literally have one product. I do it in three sizes, one product. It was a gamble. I decided that I wanted to do it um, proper in a way. So I went ahead to rent a kitchen. I had my own space, my own commercial space. And all this was just money put in in good faith, knowing that, uh, hoping, rather partly hoping, partly calculated risk that it would take off. Because I, I noticed that there were so many people with the request. Yeah. 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 And sometimes really, if you have just that one good product, all you need is just this one good product instead of, you know, developing like 10 different SKUs and 10, 20 different types and each only selling one or two units, right? So right. it's good that you are, you are, I'm, I'm sure till today, you're always trying to perfect that formula, perfect that recipe, oh, make this Per, like you know even better and better every day right yeah you, you know you just caught me at the right time like honestly the last week was a nightmare for me oh, talking yeah. about real time real time uh, situations here right so my one of my suppliers of uh, one of the flours that i bring in the gluten-free flour completely changed the concoction oh it completely threw me off my entire recipe literally failed it sunk and and you know christmas time <laughs> Hello, right? Let's go. Like the best time. Your formula now. So you know, thankfully, um, with 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 the immense amount of support I have for my team, as well as the the baking knowledge that I gained from school and all that, I yesterday I was so glad to say that I actually managed to perfect and I created my own entire blend of flour. <laughs> I'm like heaving a sigh of relief for you. <laughs> Not really. I'm so glad to hear that. It's so stressful. It was so you stressful. Eat your cake during this period, especially those who can't have cake like most of the year. Like just any cake, they need that cake. You know, festive season. I know it's a birthday and it's it's someone's wow. Birthday. It's festive. Okay. Wow. It's just it's like you know a huge gamble. It's good that you managed to sell the first um. Uh, not first, still, your second business, Naked yeah. Cake, um, someone to, to sort of still carry on what you've built on. Yes, and right. then when you, you know, you say it's in good faith, you started uh, Roar Midnight. Um, from idea to making that first sale, how long did it take you? One year. One year. 
yeah. one full year. But in between this one full year, you were still doing your naked cakes. I time, was doing right? naked cakes, yes. Okay. So what I did, um, and I recommend this to people who are probably like me, who yeah. don't take huge risk and yeah. just, well, well, it sounded very, very drastic. Like I just sold it off and I started. It didn't happen just like that. Yeah, the like transition, transition period. That's right. I tested this product. I tested the midnight cake with my naked cake customers. Mm. I tested it with home bakers. I tested it with my customers. I tested it even with my previous clients from um, Pretty Delicious. So yeah. as many people as I could. Mm. And from there, I got a sense. I listened to them and I tweaked the recipe. It took me nine months just to get the recipe. Three months to plan the business, but nine months to get the recipe, right? So, wow. you know, yeah. yeah. And, and that was when I felt like, yes, it's the right time. So I don't think anybody can tell you when the right time is. I think you should, you really need to listen to your inner self as well as your customers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of time people just don't spend the time talking to others, talking to your target audience, or target market, target customer, whatever you call them. Um, a lot of time they just like, be in themselves and just like, I don't know, close the door and try to work on the yeah, uh, yes. all by themselves. And that's absolutely yes. wrong thing to do, <laughs> right? You need to listen. You need to perfect. You need to keep reiterating while getting the feedback from people. And oh, but sometimes you do get conflicting kind of like feedback though. So how do you discern like, oh, I listen to this, but not this? So um, I think the, one of the more important things is to know in your heart, why did you want to do this? So mm. to have that as your guiding principle, like mm. the whole reason why I want to do this is because I want to make a cake delicious for people who have allergies to be enjoyed with everybody together. So what does that mean? That means that I need to create something that is palatable to even people who don't have allergies, right? So when I get, when I get responses on things like, oh, you know, you should do more flavors. You should do vanilla because I like vanilla. Oh, I should do strawberry because I like strawberry. And then that was like, to me, noise. You know, it was good feedback, but it's something which I would take into consideration in future. But right now, what is my focus? Is my focus to make 10 different flavors to make everybody happy? No, my, my focus is to make that one person in that party who cannot enjoy cake to enjoy it with everybody else. So then, you know, you shift back your mindset. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So having a clear vision at the start and while you get a feedback, stay true to that vision. Yes, yes. You said it perfectly. <laughs> I love it. Oh, great. Uh, okay, so now, you know, since then, you have grown lips and bounds. I see <laughs> your name, your business name everywhere. So tell us, what have you done in between, you know, starting it, finding the right audience, knowing that this would work, you know, jumping into commercial kitchen and all that, to actually now making sales? How do you grow that? Okay, so in the beginning, it yeah. was very slow. It was very, you know, a gentle growth, uh, which is what I think all businesses should expect in the first six months of the business, right? You should buffer for that. Um, but I did a lot of collaborations. I talked to a lot of people who I felt would benefit from this collaboration, like other moms, you know, um, but definitely you'll be met with rejections in the beginning, right? Because people don't know you, you're new, so it's difficult, but you will find people who are willing to listen and who also know your vision and are willing to, to give you that shot as well. So I, I would say I didn't stop knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. I went to as many events as I could, networking events, you know, supported. I'm actually very much active on the vegan space as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the cake is vegan. So again, that was one of the opportunities which gave me a lot of exposure. Um, and I'm very grateful. And through that, I, I learned to be very plant-based myself. <laughs> so we influence each other. Yeah, but that aside, I think collaborations were very important. Um, online learning, really learning the ropes of, you know, Google Analytics, Instagram, social media, all these things you probably would teach your students as well. <laughs> yeah, so all these things, you know, we have to learn along the way. And Really, I go back to listening to your customers, listening to what they want. That, that's essentially how I came up with my second product. So I was adamant that the first three years, I'm going to sell one cake, right? But, but people keep telling me they love that chocolate layer in the cake. They love that thick chocolate goodness in the cake. And that's how the Midnight Magic was born, which is the jar of the chocolate spread, the ganache that was born. Because I listened to the customers and that's how I came up with my second product. Yeah. That's how I grew and that's, and I get good feedback from customers. So yeah, so you just listen and you just follow along with what you think works. Wow, wow. So it takes a lot of resilience as well to be like knocking on doors and asking people if they would want to collaborate with 
you. So it's about collaboration. So a lot of people are like, okay, yes, I know I need to partner with people. I need to collaborate. So how do you come up with like partnership terms? Uh, what you decide that like, what is like a win-win situation for both parties, right? Mm -hmm. So one very good example would be, I have recently partnered with Marianne's Lactation Bakes. Mm -hmm. They are one of the leading pioneers in lactation baked in Singapore, right? So they have done, you know, they've been around way longer than I have, mm -hmm. and they serve a purpose. They serve, you know, breastfeeding moms that support on eating, eating, eating right to boost your milk. However, they are not able to come up, or rather they, they don't have that, um, the kitchen space to come up with an allergen friendly recipe, you see, mm -hmm. and parents who have kids with allergies, again, they fall through the cracks and that's where I come in. Um, and we collaborate really well because not only am I able to provide the correct, I mean, the, the taste that is there, but I'm able, I'm able to provide the kitchen that's allergen friendly. Mm. So the collaboration works perfectly because they serve their customers a need and I'm able to expose my brand to their customers who have young kids. And eventually in a year's time, they want to get their first birthday cake from me. You know, that's where, that's where we, we have a win-win. Mm -hmm. yeah. awesome. awesome. That's great. Yeah, that's uh, finding someone else who has the customer that you want. Exactly. We both want each other's customers in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we support each other. Win-win as well. Always think of a win-win way of how you can grow together. Yes. That's great. <laughs> And um, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I get asked this question a lot, and people love hearing about this question. I don't really like to ask it, but I have to. <laughs> you know, you have two girls yourself. When you started a business, especially now that it's grown beyond, you know, a uh, home baking business, um, how do you manage it? Uh, okay, you'd be very surprised to know that I, I actually don't have a helper. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah, so I don't have a helper. Not that not that everybody should have a helper, but what I'm saying is that because I I work full time, my husband works full time. Yeah. Um, we really depend on childcare. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally, I do involve the grandparents, mm -hmm. but generally, I think we have to be very really strict. And I plan my meals. I plan my schedule. Um, I have a pretty solid team, um, mm -hmm. which helps me out. A, a, a huge a huge amount so that's really helpful um but i would say planning planning is so so important you know you you don't have a good schedule it really goes everywhere so you i, I make sure that in the morning i i have my meals planned out the night before i do my grocery shopping one week before you know things like that it just helps you get into the momentum right okay so with okay there you go <laughs> the reality of mom is there, there you go I think like they're probably fighting or something. Well, I'll sort it out. Sorry, dude. <laughs> well, anyway, so, uh, all right, cool. So, yeah, so a lot of planning on your part because at home, you don't really have help. I don't. It's just more like uh, the grandparents sometimes. Um, but I think it's like, so care. Because they're still fairly young, four and seven, right? Yes, they are four and seven. So the younger one's in childcare. The mm -hmm. older one, she is, uh, she's pretty well trained to do things herself, like be herself, you know, the usual stuff. Right. Um, well, I'm not sure what, but COVID has sort of helped a little bit because now my husband works from home. Right. So to take care of her. So that really helps. Yeah, you can help a little bit now. Yes, 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 yes yeah. Yeah, if not, I will send her to classes or I send her sometimes to the grandparents in the afternoons. Mm. Or I just plan my schedules and my meetings in the morning and then, you know, afternoon, I'd be present at home with her. Okay, so like a lot of planning. So do you plan your well, like week in advance and then they, they, you take it day by day? I plan my, my work schedules. So my work schedules um, are pretty fixed on a weekly basis. But mm. my meetings and all that, yes, I try to plan it as early as possible. So uh, a month ahead. Get out of the way. Yes, like our conversation, we planned it. You, you know, we planned it like a month or so ahead, right? So that helps. <laughs> yes, yes, we have to plan things in advance. Like, okay, if we're doing anything, let's put it in the calendar because if it's not in the calendar, it's not going to happen. Done. Yes, but it won't happen. Yes, it uh, won't. Great. So, how many people do you have on your team now, work wise? I have four. I have four, four, four people, four wonderful ladies. We are also a, a, a ladies business, I think. Um, four ladies and uh, two of them have been with me for a couple of years now. One of them, four years. Um, and two slightly newer staff, but we're, they're all super supportive. Like the recent crisis that I had, everybody was like, you know, 
even if they couldn't help me directly, they were like praying for me. They were like fingers, uh, you know, like just supporting, asking how's everything. So I think the, the synergy in the team is really what keeps the momentum going. So sometimes no man is an island, you know, you can't work. You work, you start off alone. I started the business alone, but over time you need to have that support, be it from your collaborations people, the partners or from your team, friends. Yeah. You need that support. And yeah, that's just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Because sometimes like when you're by yourself, I noticed that before when I was, you know, be, without a team, mm-hmm. I tend to slag off myself as well. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like doing it. But then because I have a team, I go like, okay, you know, yeah. they are waiting for me to get my shit done so that they can get their part done, right? Exactly. Okay, okay I got to get this done. It's like, you plan for them as well, right? Yeah, or they exactly. would plan me, or they would like remind me, hey, Michelle, send me this. Hey, Michelle, have you had a chance to look at my email yet? So I'm like, they're the boss, honestly. <laughs> no, they're the boss. Yeah, they're the boss. <laughs> my, my timing and my planning and all that. Because <clears throat> um, I'm... I'm actually, well, well I, I do my planning quite well, but I am more of like an ad hoc kind of feeling sort of person. I would sometimes plan, oh, I want to talk about this on my podcast, or I want to go on live and talk on this. But sometimes I wake up on that day, I just don't feel like that myself, and I just won't do it. That's true. But That's I'm, very- if I want to say something, if I want to go on live and talk about something, I have to be feeling it. Mm. Um, like in in that zone because if I, I'm talking about oh productivity but I haven't really been productive for the past two days then I feel like I'm just not in the zone or in the right frame of mind to talk about things so I tend to like move around like they, they would plan everything out and I'm always going in there like just move it delete it like, oh can you do this instead so yeah but I think that's where the beauty of being an entrepreneur is because mm-hmm. you are the creative and that's where the magic really lies right Yes, yes, yes. Like the ideas, I, I, I constantly have great ideas. Oh, I think it's great, but probably not so much. All my teams are, oh my gosh, you're going to have a new ideas. Oh my gosh, you want to launch this in a week's time. <laughs> like what? Again, this is new. I, wonder, I thought you just did a challenge like, you know, two weeks ago. You want to launch another one? And then like, you know, like, you know, the behind the scenes, there's a lot of things that is happening. Yeah, that people don't see all the underwater. <laughs> So, I mean, like, it's great that, you know, you get to a stage where you have support and and the business is growing um, and you're taking your time to develop one product after another. What was the advice that you would give, like, a home baker right now who have perhaps started a business and they have consistent sales and they're thinking of growth? So, which, like, what, what should they do first? Like, get more sales and hire or should they hire and then expect for sales? It's like a chicken and egg thing, right? Yes, that is very true. So I would probably go back to a whole business plan concept, right? Which is what you, yeah, you, you would talk about this a lot. So I would say if you are serious about starting an actual bakery to move out there, first of all, think about why. If you are clear about why you want to do it, who is your customer? Like why I did it was for the reason of the allergen friendly people, blah, blah, blah. So if you see a gap and you see that there is something that is not available in the market that you can kill it with, I would say go for it, right? Um, of course, plan your budget, plan the first, your least period. So when I first started the business, I went for places that had much more pocket-friendly leases and I signed a two-year contract and I knew that in the two years, even if I had zero sales, I was able to afford the loss. Mm. Right? So that's, that's one thing because it is a real, it's, it's a contract, it's a legal binding contract. You, you, you know, you want to be mortgaging your house for it. So make sure you save up for that. Um, the other thing I would say that before you decide to hire, um, think about what job you want to give to person and, and who would be a best fit. Because a lot of times when people hire, they think that I just want to hire and I don't want to do anything. They run the whole production for me. It's not going to happen. You know, they, they're not going to be able to do the yeah. same style as you, they're not going to put in the same passion as, well, they, they would have be passionate in their own right. So carve out what you need for them to do, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to physical manpower, because um, having different, they come with their own mindset, they come with their own ideas as well. So I think it's good to tap on their ideas. Like I have, a, I have somebody who's an artist. She's actually a watercolor artist. Oh, she does my decorations. Oh, so it's the perfect wow. you know, she's not a baker. But she does, she loves the aesthetic, she loves to do, and she's fantastic at it. So it's, it's, it's really a fit for her, yeah. So, so yeah, so I think it's really about finding the right person. So a lot of 
problems when I, I encounter when I hear from bakers who, who expand, they say that, oh, we want a person to bake, I want a person to wash, I want a person to decorate. But you know what? That one person, if she could do all three, she would run her own business. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, the reality check is that. So I would say hire someone to assist you, to, to enhance you, such that you free up certain aspects of your time that you don't, that you think are, are easy to outsource mm. and easy to, to if the, because people, people change, right? people get pregnant, people leave, people you know, move countries or whatever. So find something that you can outsource and replicate more easily that can rehire without as much pain or find a process that will help you. So plan all these things before you even make your first hire. Yeah, that's what I would advise. <laughs> plan the, the process in your business. Uh, the, yeah, the process, the system and which part of the system are you outsourcing right now? And, and hopefully that's like a, and, be, and within that, part of the job have a system for it as well so that it's easy if that person happened to fall sick you still have someone to be exactly. able to exactly. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah thank you so much for sharing all this with me i think it's very valuable for yeah there's a lot of home baker out there um and another um question that i would ask is that um if you were to do this all over again mm -hmm. um what would you have done differently Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would probably try to, I don't know, I would probably try to hire people um, earlier because I, I know, it's, I know it's very ironic I just said that, right? To plan ahead and all that. But I would say that I would try to hire people earlier because I realized that a big bulk of my time in the beginning was spent on doing production which as a business owner, you should be focused on growing the business. Yes. So when you take out that, the, because when you're doing production, you're focused on that. Your mental space, when you come back, you're just exhausted. And that's the nature of doing businesses that require a lot of um, production. You know, be it you're creating, you're, 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 you're sewing something or you're, you're baking something, you're physically there. Um, it takes a lot of mental energy away and then you, you end up postponing your marketing plans, you end up postponing the Instagram posts, you end up, you know, waste, wasting that valuable time to gain traction in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I would say that was what I would probably have done. Uh, I would have probably tried to take in that risk um, to say, you know what, save up a little bit extra just to hire that first person earlier or the second person earlier so that I could grow the business and the monetary growth from growing the business would way cover that, you know, yeah, that, that salary that you're paying someone else to exactly. do. And you're thinking in terms of growth and it's for the long term. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I love that. Yes. Because, um, yeah, um, that's the saying like be not, I mean, if you are the business owner, don't be in the business, be on the business. Yes. Yes. Be in the business. And if you're just doing all the work, you mm -hmm. can't free up the mental space, like you mentioned, to think about, oh, how can I grow this? How can I, um, things in terms of strategic partnerships. Yes. Yeah, Great, thank you so much. And if our audience would love to taste, I think you should by now. If you're like, you know, by now you're still not like, you know, feeling like tasting Jane's chocolate midnight cake, you totally should. Where can our audience find you? So I am on Instagram, it's at Roa underscore midnight. I'm also, I also have a website. Um, it's, you know, the website, www.roa.com.sg. And I have my kitchen come pick a point space and I'm always there, usually there. So come say hi. And I give out, just, just to let you know, I give out a lot of free cakes <laughs> when people come visit. Hi, I'm coming. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so I yeah, so I love to meet people. I love to say hi. Um, I'm at Coven. Right now. Coven? Is that Jalan Pelicat? Yeah. Uh, at Coven? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm living in Coven, Jalan Pelicat. Stop by <laughs> and pick up um Jane's cake. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing your uh experience and how you've grown growing me i'm so proud of you and how far you've come Michelle, you've been so supportive since day one even way before all this like we met on other occasions like yeah, i think we have i think since naked cake i tried naked cake before yeah i think so yeah <laughs> you're <was> so sweet <laughs> all right thank you so much and uh, thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed this episode Bye bye